everyone, welcome back to Weapon Select. We're going to make part two here about the roller class. So we're going to go through all four of these weapons, all four of the different rollers. And we're going to play a game on each, and we're going to talk about the differences in play style and the strengths and weaknesses of each of these. So I think it makes sense to kind of go through these in order of range. Uh, so we're going to be starting with the carbon roller here. Um, the uh, build we're going to use... For the shooters, we just kind of all used the same thing. Um, I think that this is one of the weapons where um, gear does kind of unlock the play style a little bit more than most other weapons. Um, you definitely, definitely want Ninja Squid on a roller that is playing aggressively. So this is primarily going to be the Carbon Roller and the Splat Roller. Um, and along with that ninja squid, in order to be able to move into position quickly and aggress on players, you're going to want a good amount of swim speed, um, partly because that needs to counteract the ninja squid, but partly just because going zoom is really good on these weapons. Um, the subs here are not optimized especially well, but the quick respawn definitely does play pretty well into the roller's playstyle here. Um, if I do end up getting caught out before I can get in range of someone, that's going to be helpful for kind of being an insurance policy. Um, the special charge and stuff isn't quite as important. I wouldn't go for that, and I wouldn't go for the, the bomb range, but um, it's actually mostly a pretty good build here. Um, so we'll get started with the... It's going to be Rainmaker, Scorch, and Metalworks. Okay. Um, so carbon roller, you gotta get really close to be able to one-shot something. Like, this right here, kind of close. If I'm any further away than that, it does not one-shot. Um, even, like, here, I think, doesn't one-shot. Yeah, that's not one-shotting. That's not one-shotting. You're, you're basically talking, like, Splatana Wiper melee range. Maybe a little bit further away than that. Um... That's for the horizontal swing. The vertical flick, you know, that one shot from right about there, so it's maybe like hereabouts. Um, right, maybe get even a little bit further away. Nice. But uh, again, that's the jump swing, so that's a little bit on the slower side. So it's about this far away. So carbon roller is really like, you need to get on top of someone if you want to be doing that. And if you're any further away, it's going to be two shots, um, which is definitely a huge concern with the weapon um you need to be able to get pretty close to someone but you do have a little bit more movement speed to do it because it's a lightweight weapon um as for the kit the auto bomb is okay for it it lets it sniff people out and kind of see where they are before it tries to go in but um you worry about it kind of giving itself away with that and then zip caster is not a bad combination with it um Zipcaster is maybe the tiniest bit undertuned right now, but uh, the playstyle is actually synergized very well. Like what the roller is trying to do is going to work pretty well with that. Now here, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting around because I don't have a lot of paint to work with. So I'm going to try and sneak around this way and then maybe see if I can get some of underneath there. Right. Uh, one thing that's really nice about the Booyah Bomb there is that it smoke screens me. So people don't know I'm here. And I just get to bop, bop them. Wop on them. Go, 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 oh, hi. Okay. Well, missed. Someone top left over there. Hi. I missed. Well, that's what I get for missing. Um, good shot by the blaster. So the team is able to push in pretty well there. That's going to be a dead push for sure. We are in mid, though. I can probably jump to this. Petras will see me land here, so I need to back up a little bit and be a little bit careful. We'll throw that there to harass a little bit. Make it so they can't just, like, cleanly move in on us. I definitely want to turn this blaster, because they might just accidentally poke me from around a corner. And now I'm going to be seen, except they're on the ledge there, so it's a little dangerous. Okay. What if I just drop down here? What would they do? Splat me, right? Yeah, they'd splat me. That's what would happen. All right. They're taking it over the right-hand side, which is usually a bad idea. Um, it's slower than going the other way, and also more exposed and more dangerous. And safety and speed are the only two considerations you're really usually looking for in a Rainmaker spot, um, a Rainmaker route. So if you don't have either of those things, it's like, why would you get there? Like, 
maybe it's it's not even really a mix-up because the, t the team can just rotate in reaction to where you're taking the Rainmaker. Um, the defense usually is able to out-rotate you. If you're the Rainmaker carrier, because you're faster. Uh, they're faster than the Rainmaker is. The Rainmaker is the slowest weapon in the game. Ooh, they made the mistake of being outside the bubble. And so we get that. Hello? I thought I had that shot. That's unfortunate. Teammate took him out, though. That was a really successful zip caster. It hit its target, and it didn't give the other team any time to respond to it. And then I was able to back up, and I, my jump was... Someone was trying to camp the jump, it looked like, because they had a, uh, an autobomb up there, but uh, we were able to get it. Something about the rollers that uh, is a skill you really want to develop is the ability to... I'm putting a bunch of bombs over there because we don't have a lot of pressure on the left-hand side. Now I can probably move over because the Tetras are being, like, triple team. Um, let's sneak up here. Get rid of this. And you're down. And you're down. And you're dead. And that's going to be a white. Nice. Um, I was saying something. Uh, oh, one of the things about the rollers in general that you're going to want to be able to develop is um, while you're in the process of swinging the roller, you want to still be aiming at them. Because um, the roller's swings are pretty slow. They're a really slow fire rate weapon. Um, but you can aim them until the instance that the projectile actually leaves the weapon. And so when you press the button, you know, you may still see roller players flick one direction or another to try and catch someone out and find the picks there. Um, something that uh, you'll see maybe a little bit more on the next weapon here is that a big advantage of rollers is their ability to hit up over the top of ledges. Um, there are only so many weapon classes in the game that are capable of doing that. And this is something that you definitely want to abuse with the roller because the rollers love to shark. Uh, rollers love to sit right underneath the ledge right here. And as soon as someone tries to come over the top, whomp, you hit him up over the top like that um, with usually lethal damage. So something like this. That's even lethal from there, right? So I can probably hit this player for lethal damage with this. And uh, that's always a threat if you've got a sharking roller on the map and you don't know exactly where they are. you got to watch out for someone to be able to hit up with the top like that. It's a little bit less dangerous with the carbon roller just because it has so much less range than the other rollers do. Um, but even then, you know, the, those short ledges on Scorch Gorge, if the uh, Hydra steps a little bit too close, then on and on. Okay, this is going to be a little bit challenging because th there's just so little room that you can move on this map. But uh, we do have a couple of really good painting weapons. What in the world is, are these comps? Um, you'd never run anything like this in the to play, but we'll make it work. Um, one of the nice things here is we've got a lot of paint. And paint is something that a roller really needs in its teammates. Uh, so they can set up sharking positions. Because um, like right here, me going through mid is really dangerous. Uh, but I'm going to be able to use the curling bomb here as a movement device to give me a trail to paint through the enemy side. Uh, you saw that that traversal there would have been a lot more difficult if I didn't have that trail that I was able to paint for myself there. Uh, this is one of the best curling bomb users in the, in the game. Um, it's, I think, one of the best arguments that the, spec the sub isn't completely outclassed. Uh, is what this weapon in particular is able to do. Uh, let's just get out of here. Okay, they're pushing the issue really hard with the crab tank here, and we don't want that smoke. We don't really need to push it either. We've got a lead right now, and we got first checkpoint there. We did what we came to do. And if we don't have the advantage enough to keep the player from dropping there, yeah, we don't need to still be here. This is a little bit risky because they might have seen me coming up the wall. You're, you're visible when you paint up a wall. And now we just kind of have to back up. But we do have this. It should let us move in a little bit better. Don't want to stay too long. There's a carbon roller watching. It's a little bit hard to find it. If this player's crab tank ends, they don't see me. They're painting my feet a lot. And I'm not good. Didn't have the range to challenge any of that. Let's 
something that a roller really wants to be able to do is to just like get a whole bunch of paint on the ground and shark up behind someone and uh it's hard to do that. oh god there is someone over here that, that's what a splat roller wants to be able to do to be sitting under a ledge unseen they did a better demonstration than i have so far Um, if you realize that you have, like, swung too early, but you're going to be right next to the player that you're trying to splat, um, you can kind of just put the roller down and roll them over like that. And, uh, that's usually the only way that the rolling over someone is used in competitive play, because you're sacrificing so much range to have that option. Um, a lot of people do it because it's easier to move than it is to aim the weapon, but aiming the weapon is going to give you a lot more range to work with, and it's going to cause you to win more fights in the long run. Oh, that was not the kind of flick I wanted there. We're going to jump out, because they can just push me into the corner here. Better for me to have to jump out than to lose an entire respawn timer. Especially since I already did get one. There's someone right here, wasn't there? Maybe not. Yes, they moved. Let's take the long flank here. Let's see if we can get into the place. Oh, hi there. They were not ready. This player is in here now. Let's rotate over to the other side. Nice. Oh, there's another player there. I probably could have just spotted them fight team. Got him there. Unfortunately, it reset. That actually cost us a lot of time. I'm actually going to rotate back and try to make the same point happen again. I'm surprised I didn't hit. Man. Thought I would hit up over the, the ledge there. Maybe I just misaimed it. There's someone coming from the bottom right. I don't want to jump into that because it didn't look like, look, like, look like my teammates were prepared. This is a little bit scary. Um, it's not that much of a push for them to get the first check. And that's all they need to do. They need to get the first check plus a little more. Not that much more. If I get a little bit more paint here, I can potentially shark in, but... I... We don't really have to go anywhere very quickly. We can probably keep this position. And this way they can't contest us as easily and it's i'm just gonna sit here i'm not even gonna try and grab the rainmaker okay i was trying to guard the rainmaker from this position and just like make them scared but nice they got a little got in a little too close they disrespected my range and i can get another one they also had a disconnect at some point in there so that was kind of hurting their uh their odds all right Started getting the hang of it towards the end of it there. There aren't that many sharking spots that you can take on that map, but uh, once the map opens up a little bit, you're able to get under some really annoying ledges and uh, lock them out a lot harder. All right, and so now we're moving to a radically different kind of play style. Um, these two rollers are not aggressive or up in your face. Um, this one cannot do that very well at all. Um, there are some cases where it can get up there and play that sort of play style, but it's like, it flicks once and then it runs away. And that's about all it can handle at that point. So now that we're not playing the aggressive rollers anymore, we're going to switch up the gear a little bit. Um, the, well, it's probably a little bit more of a priority is to have last ditch efforts. So we have more ink we can put down. And, um, we also want some special charge because we're going to be playing largely around these missiles. Um, I don't think I have a lot of special charge gear built or anything like that. That's just not my main play style. That's not what I'm focusing on the most. Um, sure, samurai armor. Let's let's run it. This is this is a look. This is what I'm wearing into into battle here. Um, this weapon can play like a splat roller if it wants to because it has very similar you know frame data, especially on the uh, horizontal. The vertical is a lot slower. So this is a lot less likely to get used for that sharking application that we talked about before here. They're a lot less likely to see someone try and do this just because that's so slow. Um, 
but the horizontal flick is about the same speed, and so you can, in theory, do this sort of thing. But this weapon gets missiles, and it paints for them pretty darn well. So much more often, you're just going to see pe people using this weapon for its special and playing very supportively and just making sure to launch those at the right time and then go in with them. Um, it's also pretty good at just holding a line in front of it with um, these big, long, wide painting vertical flicks. It's hard to move in against this when it's got that kind of range and it's hitting you that quickly. It can move around by jumping out of the ink like this. So it's a very, very safe weapon. Um, it can play a little aggressive if it wants to. It can kind of shark up to someone and do this. Um, but it doesn't need to to get value. And so taking the risk is usually something that you're going to avoid. Um, this is one of the purest support weapons as it was played in Splatoon 2. Um, this is a weapon that really just played around having missiles and using those very frequently. The ink mine is maybe useful sometimes. Um, if, if there are some flanks that you want to check, you know, if you're holding down an area and you're getting really set up there, then yeah, it's nice to have some vision of them, but uh, it's not going to be a huge part of the playstyle. I see a player right there, and I bet I can just zone them out and keep them back by doing this. None of those weapons have range on me. Might be a shark up. Yes, we did. Let's go. Okay, and now, as they spawn in, we can just pop missiles on all of them. Now, slow them down a little bit. That gets one, that gets two. Just the Luna. And you shall not pass. We can hit up over these ledges, so we can deny them the routes to the tower. We're going to play a little carefully, because we know that there's someone else here. We got one, unfortunately, we weren't able to get the other. If I'd been able to fire those missiles, that would have been really nice. But team is able to hold, and we're going to have really good control here. I'm actually going to move forward a little bit right now, because we've got two backliners, and so a little bit of extra aggression. That was just an absolute stomp. I think everybody on our team just popped off at some point there. Really, really high KA game. For how short it was, anyway. Okay, what are we working with here? Not a ton of paint, but that's okay, because my weapon does paint a lot. And I'm going to be able to support the team that way. Um, but it's going to be especially important for me to stay alive in order to do so, because nobody else on this team paints very well at all. Um, we probably don't want to contest the pop here, because they do have a blob lobber, and that's going to be really good. Really Unfortunately, we didn't have a lot of paint in that area, and that's where we got contested. Now we're going to push over here. I'm just trying to keep enough paint on the ground that my teammates are going to be able to maneuver wherever it is they're trying to fight. Um, I don't care as much about areas that they don't they aren't contesting right now. Um, here we go. This is going to give us really good vision and force them to not play as red. Why did we not wait for the oh, uh, That loses us a bit of time. So we had an advantage there, but we can change it as well. We're, we're still able to get that, but we might have to back up a little bit at this point because we don't really have the numbers and it's not going to be the greatest of this. Getting flanked a little bit over here. I would prefer just not to go down, especially since I'm such an important source of paint for the team. So we were able to get them. Let's see if we can paint this here. I might be able to scare the blob blobber away. That was a bad decision. They were able to just drop in on me. Yeah, we're just gonna drop that and die. I don't want to jump into either of those players. They're pretty close to the enemy team, and they could get rushed down. It's a 4v2. Flank. Okay, good job. They call the flank. Let's go around to this side and get this painted up. Make sure flanks over here. Okay, we got that player. They're just going to drop it off. I'm going to save the missiles for now, because their team is too down, and this isn't the point, and we really need to push them out of the way just yet. 
Um, ooh, got another one there. Um, I'm gonna pop missiles and then grab. Okay, I guess I'm gonna grab. I'm surprised that didn't hit the brush there. Thought I had that aimed well. Good pick, though. Okay, I was going to try and shark up and uh, maybe get that player there, but we'll set up mines over here, which will make it much more difficult for them to push out this way. Unfortunately, but that is a spot that's going to get shot, and I didn't think about it as much. Well, I was a tiny bit too slow on that and was not able to pick it up and keep it there. Let's uh, regroup a little bit. We can probably get pop here. That gives us the paint. Might be able to get a shot on that guy. No, okay, don't need to. Paint up around our team. Can get in safely. Maybe deal a little bit of damage on the way around. Mm. Didn't even get all of my missiles out because we got flank there. Our the whole team split. Two of us came all the way back to chase the Sultana Wiper, and they are just not anywhere relevant to the map right now. Or relevant to the match. The objective. Hi. Okay, they crossed me up. Probably should have uh, kept a little bit more distance between them and me, because I didn't need to be that close to them to one-shot them. Um, I could have been, you know, a good distance away, not hitting them with the weapon itself, and that doesn't give them as much of a chance to move straight towards me and cross me up. I don't think I can save this teammate with paint here, but I'm going to do my darn best to try. They got a good trade there, so that's important for us. I am out of me. All right, so let this be a lesson to you all. Uh, the Rainmaker Shield is not going to get popped by a mine. Right, let's rush down in somebody else. And it's fine if we are taking it slow here. We are in the lead, and we win as long as we don't just give the Rainmaker away. Now we can start pushing forward. First person we're going to encounter is up there. I think there was a player on the left over here. Yes, it was. And I got them. All right. I might have gotten more splats with the Rainmaker than I did with the uh, Flings Roller itself. The pickup on the Rainmaker there, I was really hesitant about because I was pretty close to having Tenta Missiles, but um, it worked out. I, I almost think it's probably better in that situation for me to let somebody else pick it up. Because um, we had so much slaying power that some of those slaying weapons are a little redundant. And I'm the only player on the team that's going to be able to paint for them. Um, so it might be better to have me just painting there. That's an unusual situation. Usually you want the support to be the one who's picking it up. Because they're the one who's going to be able to fight the worst. And so now we get to the big old chonker of a thing. The dynamo roller. Um, yeah, Mostly some... Ink efficiency, not a lot of uh, Ninja Squid, which makes a lot of sense. This is already a slow weapon. You don't want to make it even slower most of the time. Uh, so we'll, we'll wear the Lumberjack shirt. That just seems kind of appropriate here. Largely just about ink efficiency, because running out of ink on this weapon is a death sentence. Um, you're just not going to get another flick out in time. Um, so you need to make sure that you're never running out of ink, and so people run a lot of ink efficiency on it. Um, I'm seeing some people run special charge, which makes sense. You know, if you're running this weapon, you're trying to run a tactic cooler for some reason. Um, tactic cooler just does not synergize super well with this thing um, because it's not going to be able to use the tactic cooler very well. It's going to like let its teammates run in, um, but it itself is just really slow and running in is not its forte. What this weapon actually wants to be doing rather than sitting and sharking around like the shorter ranged rollers will, is it sees someone running at it and it backs up and does this and how on earth do you get in on that you know you have to play it very cycle based like you have to wait until they've swung 
and they're trying to swing again before you're before you're going to be able to do anything about it. Um, so this weapon is actually really hard to push as a, f a short ranged weapon. Um, you have to take very particular angles. Um, you also have to be careful that like you're not just expecting cover to save you because uh, that's a very uh, very orange area behind cover right here. Um, the dynamo can hit up over the top of stuff like all of the rollers can. And with a very large hitbox that is going to one shot from pretty far away. So something you gotta watch out for. Um, dynamo is of course very positioning dependent um, because if it gets out of position it cannot get back on into position very quickly at all. Um, so it's going to have to play pretty conservatively with its positioning most of the time. Although there are some positions like uh, if we get Mako Mark Tower um, the area in front of first checkpoint is actually one of those places where the dynamo can kind of play a little bit like one of the shorter ranged rollers and slosh up over the top to hit people that are trying to aggress on the tower. And in fact, we will probably see that here. All right, lots of short ranged weapons. We do have to watch out for this tri-stringer. They can harass us and anything that is able to harass with bombs or long range is a danger to us um, because they can take away the painted our feet faster than we can uh, put it back there. That player backed up, it looks like. That we can do this. So they're on tower right now. They don't have a big bubbler, which is nice. Um, this weapon is going to be really slow at shredding through those. Uh, so that's a little bit painful for it in uh, tower control, especially since it's so common. This weapon has a lot of damage per shot, but not a lot of DPS. And me trying to shark through there is just not a very dynamo play. Um, I should be out taking more open sight lines to try and deny the left hand side if I'm going to do that. Remember, in, as in the general case, if you have range, you want open sight lines. Transport the fight that's happening over here. Paint up just a little bit there. Sometimes if you have to move, um, it's going to be faster to roll on this weapon because your fire rate is so slow that the time it takes to get another fling off is just too high. Uh, that was an issue of me being on low ground without a lot of paint support. Let's see if we can set up at a better angle here see more things as they're coming at us. This is looking pretty good so far. Um, so he's going to be up over the top here, and let's see if we can get them. Uh, they rolled out of the way in time. Well played by the Dooleys. There's not a lot of support here. Yeah, there are going to be more players here. So they're going to be able to harass us out of position. Maybe try to hit the Zuka shots. Let me see if somebody else tries to take control of the tower here. Got one, nice. Put that there and uh, it'll probably paint a little bit as the, the tower moves forward. forced that player into our teammate, and actually we got another one. I was noticing that the, the teammate was shooting at something over there. So here we're going to try and protect first checkpoint from here. It looks like they're trying to come to the right, actually. And we've already got an inkjet over the top, so this is a little redundant. Okay, forced out. Oh man, super close. Let's see if maybe we can get them over the top here. Yeah, they already moved it around. Not tracking them super quickly. Did eventually get them. And we traded there. Um, rolling on the tower there is another good application of rolling. Um, because painting your feet is really slow. But rolling around, you don't have to paint your feet. You paint as you move. So even though it's not super fast to be walking around, it is still faster 
than having to jump and do one of these flicks or something. There's someone sharpening over on the left. I bet they're going to be on top of this jump. Nope, nope, they're just going to go for the reef slider. But uh, that means that they're not going to contest us on the tower here for a while. We might be able to actually scoop up lead while nobody's doing anything about it. Alright, we got one more, and we got it to lead. Probably don't get the checkpoint there, but that's okay. Let's see if we can help the teammate here. Yeah. We deny that space that the opponent is trying to push into. I'm worried that they actually try to flank all the way around. So I'd like to be able to see that. Possible. We don't really need to push the tower at this point, and I'd rather prefer we don't try yet. Um, we, you know, we don't want to completely leave it in mid and let them get it, but pushing tower is a risk. And it's one that we don't need to take in order to win the game. And nobody got on, so we're able to just uh, win the game for that. Seemed like the enemy team did get a little bit distracted from the tower in places. Um, there were a couple of moments where, like, the, the score that I got to take lead, nobody was really contesting me for a while there. Um, and the situation at the end, nobody triggered overtime. Um, but uh, I think that was a decent example of the positioning for the most part is decent to one as uh, somebody who does not play this weapon very much at all uh, can give you. Hey, I got, my, got freshness raised on it. Cool. Hopefully that was helpful to you in uh, deciding which of these rollers to use and how to use them. Um, in terms of viability right now, just to give the quick rundown, I would say the Flingsa roller is by far the most, uh, most viable at the moment. Um, the splat roller is definitely close behind it because it has the big bubbler, which is very valuable on tower and zones right now. Um, so if you're looking for one of the aggressive ones, I would go with this. The carbon roller is just a little bit undertuned. Uh, if it gets a damage combo of some kind, or if it gets a slightly stronger special, um, then it's going to be doing a little bit better. The special synergizes well with it. It just, the best case scenario is you get one pick and get out. Um, that's... It's a moderate risk for a relatively low reward, um, whereas missiles is low risk, very high reward, for example. Same kind of deal with uh, the bubbler. It's a little bit of risk in where you place it, but once it's up, you just get to ride the tower for free. Um, and then the, the least viable, I think, by far right now is the dynamo, and that's mostly because of its kit. Um, the main weapon isn't bad. It can definitely know take a lot of space and make the other team play a lot slower than they'd like to but uh the tacticaler is something that the dynamo just can't use for itself um and you'd really prefer that the dynamo be able to at least use its special selfishly if it needs to um being able to have a booyah bomb was a great insurance policy for it in case it got chased down in splatoon 2 um it also has sprinkler which can kind of help it with movement a little bit. It can kind of put this at its feet and move if it really needs to. Um, but it would prefer a Burst Bomb by a lot for that. Burst Bomb is going to give you a lot more of a, a radius to paint with. Um, this gives you very little room, and then it's used up half your ink tank doing it. And losing your ink tank on this weapon is, like we've mentioned, a death sentence. So... It's not in a great place right now, but a better kit can definitely get it a lot higher up on the tier list. Um, so if you're looking for an aggressive weapon out of this, I would recommend the Splat Roller. Uh, if you're interested in a more supportive play style, would definitely recommend the Flingsa if you're into competitive play. But play whatever it is that you enjoy. Lots of people enjoy Big Bonk, and lots of players enjoy the, the zippy fast zip caster play style, um, which is a lot of fun and uh, can definitely get you some, some cool highlight clips, some, some cool things to, to show people to show how cool and attractive you are. So 
Have fun on your rollering, everybody. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.